What's going on guys, Tony Avanov here with another video lesson and today I'm going to talk about trader psychology. Uh, it's going to be a more serious video um, and it's something that I believe everyone needs to understand. Uh, I have an audiobook that I'm going to recommend near the middle of this video that uh, really hits a home run as far as understanding trader psychology goes and it's really just one of those things that if you don't understand trader psychology, uh, no matter how good you are at technical analysis, no matter how good you are at knowing what stocks are going to move, um, if you don't have this type of skill set, uh, your chances of being a, a profitable trader in the long term are very slim because a lot of the things that have to do with uh, trading, it it's not a common sense type of uh, way of thinking and um, it really you have to just understand that it's all about probabilities and you cannot be so focused on the day-to-day -day profits and losses. Um, uh, one of the things that this audiobook does is it brings into uh, the example of casinos. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get into this in just one second, uh, but first, if you don't know, every single day I give away $25 and it goes to a random commenter from the previous video lesson. I already picked out the the winner. Uh, level bot one, level bot one, says my Bitcoin projection for the next few weeks. If you don't know, my last video was on uh, swing trading Bitcoin and what I believe uh, the Bitcoin price is going to do based on technical analysis. L let's just check out his real fast. Um, so he believes we're in you know, doing some sort of wave here. So not a bad analysis. Um, I like the uh, the use of trend lines. I like the use of uh, the overall trend. So this is you know very much a possibility. The main thing that we have to watch is this is if we can hold ten thousand right now. Uh, you can look at the Bitcoin chart yourself. Um, I recommend using the logarithmic chart if you do, and just draw your trend lines and see uh, where levels of support and resistance are. It's not too hard to do technical analysis. The hard part of trading is as we're going to talk about today is psychology so i'm just going to illustrate my trade today on amda as a a pure example of even if you know uh you know that you have an edge in the market if you're not in the right state of mind if you don't have the right psychology you can still end up being wrong and losing on the trade um so amda was a a pure market mover they had fda clearance news of one of their devices and uh, instantly they popped up like 50 percent and I was watching it here and I you know noticed this nice wedge u-shape style pattern here and here's the first step in you know how how psychology and just how much your mind can get into your trading um, the past few weeks I've just not been on top of my game I'll be completely honest with that uh, I was I was frankly I was spoiled by December and January I made you know eight thousand dollars in December and almost ten thousand dollars in January and in February I I was down around 500 bucks from month month beginning to month end I was down 500 bucks I didn't make any money February and you know that's just kind of how trading is it's not going to be you know this a uh, a constant flow of income you're gonna have very strong months depending on how the market is and then you're gonna have just very choppy months and the past month uh, I just wasn't seeing that consistency and it really ate at my confidence and you know as a trader one of the most important things is having your confidence being confident enough knowing that um, even if uh, you know you're taking losses in the long run the edge that you have, your pattern, your strategy, in the long run, its probability of success will, you know, make you a net profit, just like a casino, like I said earlier. The casino, they don't care about every single game. They don't care that they have one guy who's playing the blackjack and is just winning over and over and over again and taking casinos money. The casino, the casino doesn't care because they know in the long run, once they have a large enough sample size of games played that they have around a 5% edge on the on the uh, on the gambling market so say that in one year um, 
one casino, their blackjack tables, uh, you know, bring in one hundred million dollars of wagers. It, no casino cares about what every single game is, but they know at the end of the year they will take home five percent of that. So they will, you know, have a net revenue of five million bucks, which is damn good profits. And you have to really treat trading the same exact way. Sorry, my mic is over here. I just noticed. Hope that didn't affect it too much. Um, so yeah, you have to treat trading the same exact way. You cannot let the day by day uh, profits and losses get to you and eat at your emotions. And frankly, I've let it get to me. Uh, I want to say one reason why uh, I'm always so worried about you know my daily profits and daily losses is because one I teach on YouTube and I have a live stream where people watch me trade every day and I know this is kind of pity to say but having people watch you trade every single day it it does bring on an extra level of stress because you have you have a feeling that you have to perform 100% all the time and you have to be every single trade perfect and profitable and uh, and most of you aren't going to experience this, but it is real. Uh, you, you have to understand that with trading, you are going to lose. No, no one trader ever knows what the outcome of a trade is. And the minute that you think you know what the outcome of a trade is, that's the minute that you are stepping off of the path of profitability. I know it doesn't make sense, but you have to just take a step back and look at it with a different point of view. Every single trade that we place, we have to understand that anything can happen. Anything can happen because the whole point of, of markets is that they are controlled by other people buying and selling. And there's no possible way for you to know after you buy a stock, what everyone else's intentions are gonna be. You don't know if someone's gonna jump into the trade you, you have no idea if someone's going to sell 20,000 shares. You have no idea what people who are just watching, what they're going to want to do. Are they going to go long or are they going to go short? You don't know that, but that's okay. Once you accept the fact that you and anything can happen and you know that there is risk upon any single trade, um, you have freed yourself from the belief that Every single trade has to be profitable because just like a, just like a casino, um, they don't have to have every single game go in their favor. They have an edge on the overall uh, gambling market. They have an edge. So they know even if they're taking a string of losses over time with a big enough sample size, which in our case with enough trades, as long as we have a a pattern that has an edge over the market, over time we will be profitable. And one of the things, uh, one of the things that one of the things that the book really touches on is the three principles of trading that you need to have. I have them right here. So first, like I said, you have to predefine your risk. You have to understand before you trade, and I've said this before. You have to understand before you trade where you're going to buy, where you're going to sell, and where you're going to cut your losses. Second one is cut your losses. You have to uh, not be afraid of taking that loss and moving on to a next stock. Because like I said, once you enter that trade, you, you have no idea what's going to happen next. And don't even try to lie to yourself and say that you know what's going to happen next. You... You have an educated guess, you have a probability of something happening, but you never know because like I said, anything can happen. And then third, third one I just had in my head, have a system for taking profits. You have to uh, not get greedy and you have to take your profits when they're on the table. Now, now, I'm not saying that you sell all your shares immediately. What I really like to do is... Uh, let's say my risk is 10 cents right um once i'm up 10 cents a share i'll take some shares off just to lock in that small little profit and if it does go against my favor 
then at least I'm not uh, losing as much as I would have before. I, I'm not saying sell all your shares, but as the um, price moves up, just slowly scale out. And then, and I know that that's not as easy to do with the small account because of the commission fees. But you have to have some sort of system of taking profits, whether that be a risk reward ratio that you base your trades on. And um, one of the things too regarding risk reward is that you cannot have a risk reward that's too, uh, you know, too outrageous. You can't go for a one to 10 risk reward because that's so unlikely of happening that after taking so many losses, even though they're small losses, it'll get to your ego and and trust me, it'll drag you down. I have tried doing crazy risk reward ratios and it just doesn't work. I have found over time that it's it it makes more sense just to go for a one to two or a one to three. So say you buy a thousand shares, risk five cents, go for 10, 15 cents. It's not a big profit in the moment, but over time, over the long run, that'll add up and that will, you know, grow your account. Uh, so for AMDA, I got in pre-market here. I bought, uh, you know, so one of the things that's been happening to me is that I would jump into a trade and uh, it wouldn't go in my favor. And that would make me doubt my system. But that doesn't make any sense because trading at its core, you're not going to be right 100% of the time. No system is going to be right 100% of the time. So you can't doubt your pattern just because one time it's wrong. So here's an example. I I was watching AMDA and I was hesitant to buy once I saw this lower high forming. And once I saw the price, you know, breaking above this wedge. So I, I waited. I didn't want to jump in just yet. And then boom, it spikes up to 310, 318. And then we're already breaking over high day usually with this pattern what i do is i buy here on the break of the wedge and then i take partial profits on the break of high day and then and then after that i scale out but because of my emotions and because of me doubting my m edge in the market and me doubting uh you know just my confidence in trading um i was too worried to buy it and then sure enough it goes up without me then i have the fear of missing out i don't want to miss this trade so i eventually bought uh just 500 shares because at this point in my trading i'm aware of me not being the best trader so i'm not you know using my whole account throwing in 10 15 20 thousand dollars so that's one good thing but so i eventually got filled at 319 at high of day 500 shares and it pops up to 336 and like i tried to sell some at 336 didn't get filled dropped back down and then i saw it you know building back up strength so then i canceled that order that was sitting there pops back up to 336 just about yeah right there 336 was on the ask and then i retyped in the order didn't get filled in it it just dropped back down it dropped back down to my entry point and I didn't want to get out because I didn't want to face another loss. I didn't want to have another loss staring me in the face. And that's something that you you really just have to accept. You have to accept that some trades are going to be losers and some trades are, are going to be winners. The goal is for your winners to be bigger than your losers so then over time, like I said, you're making profits. And then it collapsed on me. And I sold out at 305, so took a $70 loss. That was instantly, even in pre-market, just, you know, okay, I'm in another red day. And that set the tone for the rest of the day. I took more bad trades on AMDA. I hopped in here. My intentions were to hop in on the break of this pre-market uh, bounce here at 315. But I eventually got filled... 9 30 and six seconds so six seconds after market open my intention was to buy this uh this break but it moved so fast by you know, by the time i recognized 
this level of breaking and by the time me hitting my hotkey I got executed right at high of day at 339 no that was my entry I got executed at 335 and then right after it slammed right back down and I watched it go against me and I didn't want to take that other loss I I wasn't willing to cut my losses because I didn't want to have to face yet another losing trade. Sure enough, it falls even further and then by this time my losses are spiraling out of control and I knew I had to get out. So I eventually got out at 285. So that was a $300 loss. One of my one of my bigger losses that I've ever taken. And that was just, you know, once again another frustra frustrating thing. Um all set because I wasn't willing to buy this break right here let's say I bought at this point at three dollars and I followed my plan like I should have because I know that this pattern worked in the long term I would have had a profitable trade in pre-market and I would have not been so um, willing to buy this quick spot because I usually never buy the first minute of a market open I've always known these to be extremely choppy but because I wanted to you know get back at the market and show the market that you know I can do this market came back and slapped me in the face and that's just what happened so at that point I was done trading for the day didn't want to trade anything else and yeah so I mean the main thing that I want to say with this video, I know it's a bit longer, but this is, you know, just getting into the psychology of trading is that um, if you have a pattern, if you have a strategy that you, you've you known that you've tracked over time to have a higher winning ratio than losing ratio, you can't get into the habit of trying to pick and choose which plays you want to do that, uh, that fit that pattern. Because then... You know, if you talk about probabilities, uh, you, you won't allow that pattern to have a big enough sample size to show you that over time it's profitable. If you pick and choose, like I did with this one, I picked and choose. I didn't want to buy this one because I was he hesitant. Um, that is going to skew your profitability ratio with your pattern so if you find a pattern that you know works and you have all the criteria in a specific play um you cannot just try and guess okay no this one's going to be the one that wins or no that one's going to be a loser i'm not going to trade that one because honestly you don't know and once you accept that fact that you don't know and you take on the risk that okay this trade may be a loser but you know at least I know if I enter this trade I know how much I will lose and I know how much I will win if either pattern or if either scenario goes about at that point you're just leaving it you know all up to probability and you're you're taking your emotions out of the trade and once you can do that keep doing that over and over and over and over again and you will see your account grow over time it may not happen the first day may not happen the first week, may not happen the first month. But as as long as you find that pattern that you see has an edge and then you trade every single play that you see with that setup, not trying to pick and choose which one's going to work, then as long as your edge is profitable and it has an edge over the market and you implement a a a good risk reward ratio and you implement a system of taking profits along the way and of course you cut your losses if it doesn't go in your favor that's how you become a profitable trader and you know after taking so many losses the past few weeks I've you know myself as a trader I've had to go back listen to this audiobook watch my own video lessons watch my own course and just go back through my notes because um, I haven't been doing so recently because I felt like I reached a point where I don't need to do that but once you do that you'll you'll start to take losses and you'll realize okay I have to go back to the drawing board I still have to study I still have to read my books I have to learn more from other people because you cannot stop learning in an adaptive market like trading 
So the audio book that I want to recommend to you guys, it's called Trading in the Zone. It's called Mark Douglas. I'm actually watching it or listening to it with an audio book. I'll leave a link down below in the description and in the comments section um, because it is really a great book. I've I've recommended this book to all of my mentorship students and they all love it. It's a perfect way to supplement the mentorship program because it, it purely taps into the um, the psychological aspect of trading and and how to get into the confidence stage and how to uh, just have a a good attitude towards trading and not let it beat up your emotions so much so uh, the first time I listened to this audiobook was late November and then I had one of my strongest months in December and then you know I've now I'm listening to it now I'm listening to it again because um, the confidence aspect of my trading has been weighing down on me. So I, I've been reviewing this book and it's really just helping me reopen my eyes of, you know, what trading really is and how you really have to act. So I highly recommend that you take the time to watch this audiobook. I'm not sponsored by this book in any way. This is not, this is not going to be a sponsored video. The link below is not compensating me in any way. Um, it's just a book that I have found and and a bunch of my students have found to be very helpful. It is eight hours long or so, but the good thing is is that it's an audiobook so you can listen to it while you're working, while you're trading, while you're driving, anywhere. Uh, find the time to listen to this book because I can guarantee you that it'll help you with your trader psychology. So thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like. Leave a subscription, leave a comment down below for a chance to win 25 bucks. And I'll see you guys in the next video.